collections of the psalm. It's got uh, four or five of the second reading and about 20 of the gospel. So, uh, good luck. As far as which one, if you, if you, I probably will not have the ones that are in the book that you're holding on to. If I do, it's uh, God bless you. That's a great, great thing that you have. Okay, so just so you're not shocked.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. This great day of uh, thanksgiving to God for us as uh, Americans and people of good will. Uh, for us to thank God for the many, many blessings that have been poured out upon us and our families. Even in the midst of a pandemic and, or other tragedies in our life, we still can be grateful. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father, all-powerful, your gifts of love are countless, and your goodness infinite. As we come before you on Thanksgiving Day with gratitude for your kindness, open our hearts to have concern for every man, woman, and child so that we may share your gifts in loving service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. And now, bless the God of all, who has done wondrous things on earth, who fosters people's growth from their mother's womb, and fashions them according to his will. May he grant you joy of heart, and may peace abide among you. May his goodness toward us endure in Israel to deliver us in our days. The word of the Lord. Be, Responsorial, I will praise your name forever, Lord. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Praise your name. Generations after generation praises your works and proclaims your might. They speak of the splendor of your glorious majesty and tell of your wondrous works. I will praise your name forever, Lord. They discourse of the power of your terrible deeds and declare your greatness. They publish the fame of your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your justice. I will praise your name forever, Lord. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great kindness. The Lord is good to all, 
and compassionate towards all his works. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Second reading, 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestow on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you are enriched in every way, with all disclosures and all knowledge, as the testimony of Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm in the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the excuse me. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. Throughout the whole world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. And as he was entering a village, ten persons with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing that he had been healed, returned glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. So this uh, day that we celebrate of thanksgiving to God, the very word Eucharist meaning thanksgiving for us. It's such a a good virtue for us to build within our hearts, to have a sense of gratitude to God for blessings that we receive in our life. Uh, I, I, I recommend this for our families together today, that we make it a point uh, to verbally, out loud, go around the room, whoever of us are gathered together, uh, or if you're on a, a Skype session or a phone call, whatever it might be, that you would spend a little time verbalizing out loud, what am I thankful to God for this year, this day, this week, whatever it might be. I think when we, when we say something beautiful like that, something positive, something good out loud, it does something to us on the interior. It it orders and organizes our inside of our spiritual life in the the right place. 
It's like when you say, I love you to someone. It not only expresses something to them, but it also evokes something out of us, doesn't it? That there's something on the inside that changes within us towards the person as we're saying it. It has some deeper meaning and purpose to it beyond just some words of expression of affection. And that's what the Lord uh, is desiring for us. It's not like God needs the thanks. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't need it in order to be happy. But he knows it's good for us to recognize how blessed we have been and for us to offer that thanksgiving to him does something to build us up in our relationship to God and puts things in the right place where they should be of a relationship. I think of uh, occasions of my life where my parents, you know, when you're a kid, you're growing up and you, you receive a gift from someone and your parents remind you as a young person, what do we say now? What do we say? Oh, thanks, Grandma. Thanks, Grandpa. Thanks, uh, Aunt or Uncle so-and-so. Thank you. We, we learn to say thank you for the blessing and the gift that's been presented to us. When we think of ourselves as humans in all of creation, we have so much that God has given to you and I. Of the millions and billions of possibilities of persons that could have been created, we are the ones that are here. Our very life itself is a gift that God has given to us. And to appreciate that gift. God, I, I realize that in the kind of world that we live in, the choices that people make, I could not be here. That's, that's a real reality. I, I simply could not be here. Except that you have desired that I would be here. And you have known me from my mother's womb. At the first moment of my conception, you have known me. You have loved me. You have desired my well-being. You have wanted to pour out creation for my benefit. And even in its fallen state and the brokenness of this world, it is here, all of creation is here for my success and for my soul to be offered the gift of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ, and that you desire me to be in heaven with you. Your son, you offered your very son, his death for me so that I would have access to that great life with you. And he has not left us alone here on earth. You have together have sent your Holy Spirit to us, generation after generation after generation. You've given us the sacraments in having that close contact with you, God. We pray and you hear us. You heal our bodies. You anoint us. You bless us. You give us your grace. You can see then why St. Paul spoke as he did in that second reading. Grace to you, which is the Holy Spirit, right? Holy Spirit, love to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This outpouring of God's healing, God's love entering into our existence as a gift to us. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. 
and by him you were called to fellowship with his son. I mean, it's not chance that we're sitting in the church today. It's a combination of providence in God's love for us, the fact that our parents or whoever it was in our life introduced us to Jesus Christ at one moment in our life or another, if we were a child, the moment we were baptized, and the faith that we were brought up in or the, that we converted to over time. And here we sit as, as an invitation from God to be here today, and we responded to it, thanks be to God. And what do we do with this? Let's take a moment and think through Blessings in our life, people in our life, graces in our life, healings in our life, whatever it might be, that it's good for us to thank God today and to allow that thanksgiving to transform us in the fellowship of Christ. Stand now and bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. For the Holy Church of God throughout the world, may she announce courageously the gospel of salvation and witness joyfully to Christ crucified and risen, who gave his life for the love of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For those called to govern nations, that they may commit themselves courageously to see the, seek the common good in true freedom and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who live in poverty, for those sick in body and spirit, for the marginalized and for the elderly who live in lonely circumstances, let us pray to the Lord. For the members of this assembly, for their families and friends and neighbors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who have died in the hope of resurrection and eternal life, especially for Kundo Kambate, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the gift of life that you've given to us, your Son Jesus that died for our sake, that we might have eternal life with you, for the graces that you give to us each and every day in sustaining our lives and drawing us ever closer to yourself. Thank you for our families and our friends and all those whom we encounter in our life. We ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. God, our Father, from whose hand we have received generous gifts, so that we might learn to share your blessings in gratitude, accept these gifts of bread and wine, and let the perfect sacrifice of Jesus draw us closer to all our brothers and sisters in the human family, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. You have entrusted to us the great gift of freedom, a gift that calls forth responsibility and commitment to the truth that all have a fundamental dignity before you. In Jesus, through his death and resurrection, we find our ultimate redemption, freedom from sin and every blessing. And so with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Donald our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. In this celebration, O Lord our God, you have shown us the depths of your love for all your children. Help us, we pray, to reach out in love to all your people so that we may share with them the good things of time and eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Very grateful to all of you today for being here and uh, those of us that are joining online or will watch later, we're very grateful for your presence, uh, being able to continue the ministry that we have online. Pray for all of those uh, who are homebound today, those who are not able to to, you know, we're not supposed to be traveling if we don't have to, so pray for everybody. It's just going to be a hard Thanksgiving, right? Uh, but remember, 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 we are never alone. Never alone. We are never alone. Even if we're the only physical body in the room, we're never alone because we have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit always present with us. We always have our guardian angel right there in the room with us. Uh, so we never have to be concerned that we are alone, okay? even if we are in solitude in a particular moment. Thank you to our musicians and for getting all of the liturgy ready. We did get the sheet of paper right. Oh, uh, Amelia, I did get it right. I just didn't announce it in the beginning. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, and uh, thank you. I know we have a number of folks who are helping out with home delivery of meals today. So... Thank you to all of them for their time and energy cooking yesterday and then getting it ready for delivery today and all those that will participate in that process. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving.